A year ago, on the 30th of November 2022, OpenAI introduced generative AI heralding the greatest technological leap of our times. ChatGPT, a marvel in machine intelligence, swiftly captivated the world, achieving 100 million monthly users within just two months of its launch. Now, big tech swiftly recognized the signs and Microsoft boldly made its third and largest investment in OpenAI, pledging a staggering $10 billion along with more to dare Google. They will definitely want to come out and show that they can dance. And I want people to know that we made them dance. And I think that'll be a great day. Google prepared to embrace AI, countered with a strategic move led by Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai. With generative AI, we are taking the next step. With a bold and responsible approach, we are reimagining all our core products, including search. But not everyone was on board. An open data endorsed by Elon Musk and over 30,000 others urged a halt on training AI systems surpassing GPT-4 for a minimum of six months, advocating a thorough assessment of risks and challenges. As predicted in the letter, layoffs began and the global workforce stared at the danger of being replaced with AI. Even Hollywood went up in protest. It was clear that governments needed to build guardrails as the technology is powerful to be left in the hands of corporations. Testifying before the Senate, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman agreed. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. And the message resonated, prompting the U.S. Senate to summon big tech leaders to talk policy. Meanwhile, Amazon entered the fray, placing a $4 billion bet on open AI competitor Anthropic. In the intensifying AI race, establishing a responsible framework gained prominence at the AI Safety Summit in Britain. The Bletchley Declaration, signed by over 25 countries, including India, the US, EU and China, has marked a pivotal step forward. Now, a year since the launch of ChatGPT, regulatory uncertainty remains, but OpenAI and other frontier AI labs suggest that what we've seen so far is just the tip of the iceberg. We do all of this because we believe that AI is going to be a technological and societal revolution. As intelligence gets integrated everywhere, we will all have superpowers on demand. We hope that you'll come back next year. What we launched today is going to look very quaint relative to what we're busy creating for you now. A technological and societal revolution. Well, since its launch last year, chat GPT-like models have globally transformed the AI landscape. So while India ranks first in AI skill penetration and boasts of a fifth of the world's AI talent as per NASCOM, the country's seen about $3 billion flow into AI startups in 2022, compared to the US, where a whopping $47 billion have gone into newly formed artificial intelligence companies. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest-running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhandi. To talk to us about how far we've come and what our priorities need to be going forward, we're joined today by Uma Khan Sani, chairman at All Foundry and co-founder of AI and Robotics Technology Park. We also have with us Drupal Shah, the co-founder of EdTech AI startup Stemp Media, and Anirudh Mishra, the founder of August AI, a platform that gets you personalized answers to your health questions using AI. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the program. Uma Khan, my first question, where are we today in the AI journey? Well, thank you, Shreen, for having me on the show. Uh, very quickly, I've spent almost like last 15 years in the AI space. Uh, you know, built the first AI chatbot company in 2009, and there were only four guys trying to do that uh, across the globe. I also, co-founded the first AI focused venture fund called Five Ventures. Uh, co-founded a not-for-profit uh, art park AI and robotics technology park uh, together with the Ministry of Science. Uh, so, spent a fair bit of time. And uh, ChatGPT, as you rightly pointed out, it, it's a seminal moment in human history because for the first time, we have English as the best programming language for machines. And I, I, we are at a cusp of what I call as the intelligence economy. By 2030, you know, we're going to create $15.7 trillion mm. of new economic value with that. So some massive, massive uh, you know, change that we are actually you know, standing on. And it's very important for us to actually understand and unpack it a bit, right? So if I look at 1975, you know, that was the time when we had connected up to a billion places with rails, with roads, with, you know, flight, with water, and we could sell the excess production of one place to another. And that was the, you know, the birth of the industrial economy or the, you know, the height of the industrial economy. By 2009, we had done the same with, uh, you know, connecting people with internet, emails, social networks. And we were actually having what we call as the knowledge economy, where we dominated. Uh, and we had companies like Wipro, Infosys, TCS, and we know what they did with it. Now, 
you know, chat GPT signifies mm. this beginning of this, what we call as, you know, the intelligence economy. By 2030, we're going to have like uh, seven and a half billion people connected with 30 billion machines, right? And forming what we call as the, you know, the core of the, you know, the mm. intelligence economy. Now, if we don't transition our lead, which we actually had with the knowledge economy into this massively emerging intelligence economy, it yeah. could be a massive disaster. And, you know, fundamentally, I see we need four critical mm. Ingredients for AI success. We need data, we need talent, we need compute, we need capital, right? Um, companies grown in India, and you might see some of them right now, and have, you know, uh, supported, invested, you know, close to 17 of them in India. What we have seen is that they're grown in India, they're able to leverage rich data and abundant AI talent to create robust and safe AI. And then they are able to take it to, you know, Southeast Asia, Middle East, Africa. You know, we, we hmm. supported a, a company called YSR.io, which is, uh, you know, now uh, the largest mental health, you know, chatbot platform in the world, right? Uh, and 60, 70% yeah. of the traffic is now coming from outside India. Uh, what we are seeing is a massive deficit is what we call as hmm. compute and capital, right? As you rightly pointed out, I mean, till 2022, hmm. we had like close to uh, $248 billion invested in US as compared to seven and a half billion dollars in India. So it's a, you know, I see a, a clear gap of like 35X, which is very, very difficult, right? So we need to figure out ways to how do we increase uh, yeah. you know, the capital behind AI in India. The second big challenge that I see is compute. I mean, just to put, mm. you know, mm. convert GPT into chat GPT, mm. uh, you needed AI super clusters, right? I mean, the largest uh, GPU mm. cluster in India is like, say 700, 800 uh, GPUs at the moment. And when we have to talk about excess scale AI computers, mm. we're talking about you know half a billion dollars of investment. And, and that's where the race is going. So we somehow need to figure out ways yeah. to bridge this gap, both in capital as well as in compute. And it is critical that we mm. do that really fast. So on this critical, on the two critical challenges of compute and capital that you articulated for us, what is the way forward? What do we need to prioritize in being able to bridge both these very significant gaps? What's the role the government can play? What's the role of the private sector? So I think there are two things that are very, very critical. One, we need to find, uh, you know, if I, if I were to bridge both these gaps, we need to find credible ways of bringing public and private sector together, right? So whether it is in terms of, Hmm. Maybe we need to create a large, uh, you know, public-private fund of fund just focused on AI, right? And maybe it could be like a ten billion dollar fund of fund, and maybe you know, government can say, okay, I'm going to you know contribute a small amount, maybe you know, less than half a billion or so. Yeah. But then the rest money could come from the private sector guys. I mean, there are large pension funds, you know, hmm. who are looking to you know put money into India, and that fund of fund could then power you know multiple you know, AI-focused venture funds to put money into the AI companies. Uh, that could be, yeah. uh, you know, one approach that we could actually look at. Uh, and maybe government could incentivize, you know, creation of some of these uh, venture funds because the risk-taking capital has okay. to increase behind AI companies. The second one I see is very critical is what we were talking about, compute. And maybe we need to create, you know, our own sovereign AI cloud. Maybe we need to create these companies. Maybe we need to provide incentives to grow such companies because, Today, if I see, there's a massive challenge, you know, in terms of, you know, one, mm. we don't have a sovereign cloud. If I look at China, they have Alibaba, they have, you know, Tencent, they have Huawei, right. all of them actually created their own, uh, you know, uh, clouds, mm. but we don't have that. And, and mm. given that, you know, AI or the, you know, the intelligence economy is going to become, I mean, $15.7 trillion of new economic value is a massive opportunity. If you have to hit like 30, right. 35 trillion by 2047, a large chunk of that has to mm. come from something which has never been created before, and that's where this intelligence economy figures in. So I think if you have to, you know, yeah. make a attempt, uh, incredible attempt at that, right? And and we, we are seeing that today, right? Like if you look at OpenAI and where they're going with it, right? I mean, just one company consuming thirteen right. billion dollars of capital, right? So I, I think even if we are yeah. not able to, you know, get to that number in terms of purchasing power parity, we need to, you know, maybe ten mm. x our numbers. So, terms of capital right yeah. so instead of maybe three or okay, seven so, billion so, so, uh, we need to go to at least 70 billion no, go, go.
But Drupal, let me come to you now because you started your AI journey with your company, Semp Media, in 2015 to address what we just heard there from Umakant. You know, to start with, uh, the aspiration that you have in light of the experience as well as the opportunities that you see, and how do you believe that we need to address some of the gaps that we just spoke of? The transition is happening so you uh, at a so fast place right from the exams and everything being kind of tried to be solved by ai or chat gpt yeah now what we see is we need to prepare the students how to compete or how to do the work in the upcoming years right what we are talking about as the intelligent economy mm. uh, so in that we what the most important thing will be how the students learns about the computational thinking how they can do things by their own yeah. hands, what we call as experiential learning. So we are creating right. tools and technologies for uh, students and teachers, how they can train the students on the upcoming technologies of the future, like AI, robotics, mm. and uh, much more on that, uh, we are preparing the tools. Uh, our tool called as PictoBlocks, which is an AI and robotics education platform, is nowadays used by more than 1,80,000 students across the world. And out of that, only 35% is from India. And we see that okay. more than uh, 6,000 schools are now already using our platform. Uh, so that's what is the reach mm. of AI nowadays. And students and teachers are able to understand that because they also think, uh, including the governments, what we are talking, or including teachers okay. or parents, they see that the use of AI in this will become so prominent in our life that it will be kind of uh, the core essential technology for us. What is the revenue that you're targeting and are you profitable already? Okay, so yeah, our startup journey has been very uh, different than what we see in a, core, a lot of startups being covered on the media. So we started uh, from pretty uh, kind of as an uh, doing a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo in 2017. It was the first uh, university student led project uh, which got global funding as in pre orders of 45k USD. And we delivered more than uh, products in more than 30 countries before our graduations. So that was the starting sp uh, point. Mm. And today we have uh, revenues of more than 2 million uh, last year, uh, last FY23, we closed. And with a profitability okay. of more than okay. 1 crore. This year, we are now looking to close more than 6 million revenue uh, with a profitability. That's what is the target. At the same time, we create and we focus a lot on technology creation. And we are already collaborating with some of the leading IITs in the country and uh, foreign universities, universities right. like Malta University and fin in Finland because they are kind of one of the pioneers in uh, what we call as an experiential learning. And the focus is right. also coming, upcoming. Uh, our upcoming focus is on training the teachers and building a huge fleet of educators mm. uh, uh, to impart the skills in the schools.